Hello and welcome to video 7 of the Algebra video series. In this uh, video we're going to check out factorising algebra expressions. Should be fun. OK, to factorise, what we do is we create some brackets here. We've got to find the largest term that is common to both of the terms in the question. We put that largest term that's common out the front of some brackets and then we fill in the brackets with appropriate terms. That doesn't make much sense at this stage, but we'll see some examples and we'll see how that works out. Okay, we're asked to factorize uh, 3y plus 6. We've got to find the largest term, whether it's a number or a letter, that can divide into both of the terms in the question. Can you see that? What can go into 3y and 6? I'm hoping you're thinking that 3 can go into both of those because we need to put that 3 that can divide into 3y and 6. We put that out of the front of the brackets. Now this last bit, filling in the brackets with appropriate terms. We ask ourselves some questions here. We ask ourselves, what would we have to multiply that front 3 by to get 3y? To get back to 3y. Uh, okay, so I'm here to tell you that I would need a y in there. If I was going to multiply something by 3 and get 3y, I'd need a y in that bracket. So we're just filling it in with what we need. And we ask ourselves, what have we got to multiply 3 by to get 6? So that'll have to be going in, uh, that answer will have to go in that bracket there. So can you see that um, we'd need to multiply 3 by 2 to get back to 6? See, factorizing is the opposite of expanding. So we can use that fact to check on our answer here quite easily. We can check by expanding our answer. This is our answer. We usually leave our answer alone. But in this case, we're going to expand our answer like we did in the last uh, video and see if we get back to the question. 3y plus 2, if we expand that, 3 times y is 3y. 3 times 2 is 6. What we've got there is uh, our question. We're back to our question. So if we factorize successfully, correctly, we should be able to expand our answer and get back to the original question. And that, that's uh, how we know we are correct. And that's uh, all because factorizing and expanding is uh, the kind of opposites of each other. OK, so any time we get a factorized answer, we can expand it and check whether we're correct. Factorizing this, let's see, the largest term that's common to both of these uh, terms here. Can you see that 5 can go into both of them? So we're going to put that 5 out the front. Then we're asking ourselves some questions. 5 times what would make 5m? We need uh, an m to be in that first section of the bracket. Then we ask carefully, 5 times what makes minus 15? I'm hoping you're thinking that that might be a minus 3. And we can expand that and check that it equals 5m minus 15. 5 lots of m, 5m. 5 lots of minus 3, minus 15. Looks pretty good to me. Okay, not much trickier here. What's the biggest thing that can go into 6 and 12 there, or 6 and minus 12? Let's take a 6 out the front. Now this is a bit different because we, when we ask uh, what are we going to multiply 6 by, to get 6, we're going to put a 1 in that bracket. We're allowed to do that. So 6 times 1 makes 6. Then we're asking 6 times what would make minus 12g? Okay, to turn a 6 into a minus 12 and with a g next to it, we'd need a minus 2g in that second section. And once again, we can always uh, expand these brackets and see if we get back to the original question. Then we'll know whether we're correct or not. Okay, here, this one's a little different. What's the largest term that's common to both? Well, the only thing that's common to both, really, is the M. We're allowed to take a letter out as the common uh, term in front of the brackets. Let's now ask ourselves the proper questions again. M times what would make MN? Well, we'd need an n in there to make m n, so we're going to put an m in that first bit. Then we're asking m times, whoops, <laughs> m times what would make minus 3m? Well, we need a, a minus 3 in that second section as well. And we can always expand and check whether we get back to the question to see if we're correct. 
Okay, biggest thing that can go into this. Now we can find a number and a letter in this question. Biggest thing that goes into 8 and 12 is 4. And you can notice that there's a P in both of them. So we've got to take a term out the front with a 4 and a P in it to get that uh, first step happening there. Then we're asking what have we got to multiply 4, 4 P by to get 8 A P. I think you can see that we'll need a 2 and we'll need an A to create that term back there. So in, in one way we're thinking backwards just to check what we need in the brackets. What are we need what are we going to multiply 4 P by to get minus 12 C P? Well, we've already got a P, so we'd need to multiply 4 by minus 3 and a C if we're going to create that second term when we expand. So we're always keeping in mind that we can expand this and get back to the original question. Okay, another one. Now, what's common between these two? Well, I think 3 can go into both of them. And any letters that are common? Yep, we've got an M here and we've got at least one M there. So let's take a 3 and an M out the front. Now we're asking, what have we got to multiply 3M by? To get 3M squared N. Now we've already got a 3 and we've already got one of the M's. We're going to have to multiply it by another M if we're going to create an M squared. And we need an N in there as well. So I hope you can see that we can uh, fill in that brackets with an MN here. And we can check by expanding again. What have we got to multiply 3M by to get 9M where well, we'll need a 3 in there as well. So if we expanded that out, I think you can see that uh, we'll get back to the question. A bit trickier, that one. But I hope you've enjoyed this video series, this algebra video series. Uh, watch the videos over and over until you get the hang of it. And uh, if you're not sure, ask your friendly local neighbourhood mathematics teacher and uh, they'll be all too glad to help you, I'm sure. Uh, thanks for watching my videos and uh, have a good day.